Please welcome Tatiana Derevanassian from Dream Living LA as we will be discussing how to buy a home in today's market along with some true crime from back in the day. Today, we have an absolutely fantastic guest. Okay. She's one of today's top realtors All right. in the business here in Los Angeles, and her name is Tatiana Dezaborian. <laughs> Deravanesian. okay. Also oh, known as Darth Vessanian <laughs> of Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. One more time. And we have a great guest here today, and her name is Tatiana Deravanesian. And I know she's cheering me off off the off the side there because you know what I always I'm like I've been always saying da 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 Hop in. I'll hop in. I want, you right, I want you right in How between. Are you? All right. <laughs> nice seeing you. Nice seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. There's a mic. There's a mic. I, All right. I, I so, in between. My uh, goodness. Yeah. Oh, know. we got a fan already. <laughs> there you go. Scope fan right there. There you go. All right, Scope. So, Shameless I wanted. <laughs> yeah, right? I, exactly. I wanted outside, but at least can you make some drinks happen or something? Oh, my God. You're getting very, very uh, like picky today, I, right? I'm like you, right? All right. You want me to do two clicks or, or a clap? Two clicks. How about a clap, too? All right. You all right. know what? I know how to make things happen, right? Oh, oh, oh. oh. Is it? Is that? You called, sir. Yes, oh. I did. Some refreshments, please. Oh. Is that not the whiskey spy guy? It is, but don't tell him. Oh, OK, OK. <laughs> he follows us everywhere. Oh. He's always trying. He's sort of like. Yes, please. He's sort of like Tommy, always trying to steal the show, so be careful. I, I've heard of this guy. I've kind of forgotten about him. Let's keep him in the closet where he belongs. <laughs> yeah, keep him in the closet. A good service. I, right? Good way to start this show. I know. I, we just love, you know, having a good time. I think we were talking about it earlier, is uh, the podcast is a reason to drink. <laughs> um, not Celebrate. that we ever need one, mm -hmm. but uh, it just gives us a reason to drink more. Hey, why not? All right. So... I know uh, Scoff and I have talked about how him and I know each other, mm -hmm. and Scoff alluded to it when uh, he made your Thank wonderful you introduction. Yes, but, thank you um, for that. You didn't scramble my name too badly. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough, right? Thank yeah. you. Oh, God. I might, that's why I just go with verbs, you know, <laughs> like Scoff. Yeah. Tati. Tati. That's what he calls me. There we go. That's what he calls me. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's always Scoff, like, exactly. Tati, and Fratty. Yeah. There we Michelle. go. Yeah. Just there an idea. Go. Just saying. There we are. But um, uh, that'll be it. Thank you. Thank you. But can you give our viewers a uh, kind of rundown how you guys know each other and how this kind of came about? Sure. Scoff and I have known each other uh, for almost, I would say, 15 years. Yep. We were colleagues in the entertainment industry. And I'm not sure, I, I'm pretty sure we met at a party. First. Yeah, 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 probably. We're so known we're in, for entertaining, yeah, so yeah, I don't think entertainment party, means anything let's, let's other than real. drinking, right? Yeah, but I fell in love with him because his personality, his spirit, his character, he's a great guy. I really loved him in the industry. They still do. Thank you. Scope. That's every reason I don't love him. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually just the whiskey he brings or something. Well, yeah. Okay, go he on. He likes me more as he drinks. Yeah, well, I can see that. He's, he's, you have to get used to him, I think. <laughs> he's like a, a fine wine or a, a scotch. You kind of have to let yes. it breathe a little, and then it becomes a little more palatable. Yeah, I, I totally right. agree. Um, Speak for yourself. So we've known each other for a very long time and are also very good friends, and I think, you know, bounce things off of each other professionally and personally a lot. Yep, yep. So there's awesome. uh, that connection. That's how we know each other. Very cool. And so you're in real estate now. You Correct. You're in the entertainment world. How did that whole shift transpire? <clears throat> That's an interesting question. I know I never thought I would actually transition into something else because I loved what I did. I was an executive producer and had built several production companies for different investors and also had my own company for many years. I did film, TV, digital content, broadcast, TV, everything. It, it was really an amazing time. 18 years of uh, 
incredible experience running some great companies. And then I went to NBC and ran a studio there for quite some time, the digital studio. And it was at that point when I was there in 2010, I started actually thinking about investing in real estate myself, personally. Okay. And I'm such a type A personality. <laughs> yeah. Right, where I'm just, right. I want to control everything, and I I know how I work and mm -hmm. how I would want it done. So she's already rewrote her script. <laughs> <laughs> I walked in and rewrote your script. Yep. The entire thing is green. Now. I mean, isn't that why we were at your office? We're going to do it there, and she said, No, 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 no. it has to be like, at my play. We got to do it there. We got well, exactly. Yeah. I, I didn't want to say that, but yeah. <laughs> I thought you might enjoy doing it here. Yes, this is and lovely. We are. Trust me. <laughs> um, and so I ended up actually investing in a piece of real estate going through the process of, of on a, a very small scale, nothing like what I'm doing today, and I um, flipped my first property. Oh. And I really loved the process, mm -hmm. and I thought to myself, this is something I could see myself doing at some point if the opportunity did arise. Well, at that time, there was a transition at NBC, and a big conglomerate came in and bought uh, NBC Universal, and it was a matter of things happening happening in life that led me to make a different career choice, really. Mm. And at that point, I said, what else can I do that will give me as much creativity, control, I can run my own company like I've done in the past. Yep. Um, that be on I, your own. Be, be, your on own. My, be on my own. Right. No partners, no nothing. Because I've been through that before. Yeah. Yeah, and I, it, it I could be great, this. but yep. it could also be painful. Yep. I did go through a professional divorce that was really painstaking. Yep. It was tough. But I felt like... The real estate world hadn't really had someone like me in it. And when I say that, I had such a, and I still have such a big media presence and media muscle mm -hmm. and creative resources, people weren't doing it the way I had envisioned creating a, a media, real estate media presence. And so I thought, I'm going to go in there and try something totally different and new and break the mold and shatter that box. You know, I don't think outside the box, I shatter it. And I'm like, I have nothing to lose. So I decided to transition into real estate in 2010. Wow. Like a latter year, but more seriously in 2011. So you, you mentioned real estate or investment real estate. Yes. Are, is that what you're doing now or, or when did that go from no, no, no. investing into My vision, I, I don't do personally any investment, but my vision was that I knew so many people in the industry. We, we do know a lot of very high profile people with a lot of money. And I saw an opportunity there on my side to present to my clients the opportunity to make money in real estate. So I would do a whole pitch deck, like mm -hmm. when you would pitch, yeah. you know, Target or yeah. Mercedes, yeah, yeah, yeah. like a full visual yeah. pitch deck, and right. go to all these industry executives that I knew, pitching to them luxury residential developments and showing them okay. the profit margins and the creative process, which they love. And so I, it was a tough thing to get people to understand because mm -hmm. it's hard to get them to pull their money out of the stock market you right, know, when right. they're doing well. But when they're not doing well, that was a time in 2010, 11, right. where it, it, it was a better opportunity to get into real estate. Mm -hmm. The market was rising. So I ended up going to a lot of my big, big clients from the entertainment business, pitching this for like two years. And they mm -hmm. kept saying no. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I got them to uh, you know get involved and a big crux of my business is residential uh, development. Okay. So I don't personally invest myself, mm -hmm. but I'm very vested in the entire process right. from beginning to end. And it's a it's a, a totally different role than what a real estate agent does on a right. you know a, a direct level. Mm -hmm. This is very intricate and it's creative and it's very creating a whole LLC. There's a whole process there. So that's how that. <laughs> That ended up happening. Yeah. The one industry that everyone still will always need is housing. Absolutely. You can yeah. never go yeah. wrong. I'm, I'm glad you're saying that because there, everybody today is just as savvy as you are because the marketplace is mm -hmm. there and the technology is there for you to be able to shop mm -hmm. and see. You didn't have that before. Right. Right. So people are very keen and understand the market and see what's going on. Real estate is an asset and always will be. It's all based right. on timing. Mm-hmm. So you can never go wrong in buying or selling, renting, you're just burning money. Really right. you are, but most people are in that situation where they can't necessarily buy at the time. Right. But you should really, money is so cheap these days that you should really figure out a way, you know, to try mm -hmm. to buy because that investment will always appreciate. It's all about timing when you sell it. Right. If the market dips, 
like the stock market, it's the same yep. thing. It's a commodity. Yep. So it's timing and holding on to it. And when it appreciates, then you sell. Mm -hmm. But you did a good thing by investing. So well, I, think that's, I, bought, I think that's smart. When I bought my house, I bought it high. <laughs> <laughs> we have this buy hell, I sometimes want to burn so my low. house down, right? So I bought no. my house. No, but it was a really, you know, in 07, 08, I was like, oh, my God. If we don't yep. buy a house right now, we had the money. So then we decided, okay, we found a house that we love. We had four kids. The kids all needed their own rooms. And the next thing you know, it's like... Six ninety five, six ten, eight ten million dollars. I'm like, oh my god, this is crazy. So I wound up buying this fantastic house. You've been over yeah, for dinner and house. drinks, and yep. and you've been at the house and yep. everything. And then the next thing you know, a year later, it's down to four ninety five. Yeah, well, and I actually had four hundo in the bank, and I could have <laughs> bought it for cash, probably, right? <laughs> and I'm just thinking, I never have to have a payment again. But and then and then it was like, oh my god, people I know that were walking away from their homes. They were like going broke. They were losing right. everything, right? But my wife and I talked it over, and oh, by the way, it is my anniversary today. Oh, happy so, anniversary, yeah, yeah. So Judy. I do have to shout out to my yes. wife. Happy anniversary, Hi, Judy. honey. Happy anniversary. I, I apologize for spending for it with another woman. <laughs> I can't believe you put up with it for so many years. <laughs> I, She's but, a gem. <laughs> She's just a saying. Gem. Yes. Yeah, she does. Uh, you get a gold star. Well, it's let's uh, let's cheers too. to that guy. Yes, yeah, 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 to Judy. Cheers. To Judy. How many years again? I'm not even too many. Tell you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hmm. We got to talk about that scotch. Yeah. But moral of the story is, is we hung in there, right? And now our house yeah. is definitely worth We're far more. more. We're doing very well, right? right. Probably it'll hit a million in no time. And I mean, yeah, and we did put some money in it. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's like where you're going to live and where you want it and where you want your family to grow mm -hmm. up. I agree. You just got to stick with it. And real estate, if you can hang in, is always going to be the best play. And you have yeah. to have a pro by your side, yes. who knows the game. Yes. Because it's a really, really intricate game. Real estate is not a surface thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have someone on your side, you have me on your side, yeah. you have me on your side. <laughs> yeah. um, you need someone who is always watching your back and right. understands how to, you know, consult for you and um, and advise you on timing Absolutely. and what to do and all the different things to maximize. Okay. Advocacy and also, in, I don't know how it is in Phoenix, mm -hmm. but in the state of California, it's such a litigious state. Mm -hmm. So when you go through a real estate transaction here, if your agent doesn't know, you're, we're, we're so many roles. Right. Glorified lawyer is one of them, although we shouldn't be playing that role, right. but we need to really understand how to navigate the law for our clients. Mm -hmm. So here, the, when you finish a transaction from when you last bought your house, right. your, your packet was probably like that. It's oh like God. this now. Yeah. Yeah. So clients get very confused, and a lot of agents don't necessarily guide their clients properly mm -hmm. or explain or understand how to get them out of situations. And that's a really important aspect yeah. of what we provide for our clients that you, you have to know. Yeah. Well, one of the other things I wanted to mention too, because I'm definitely into branding, right? I mean, with our brand, Schofield's Flowers. With your pillows and that you pillows bring everywhere. I wanted to make sure. Is there a house in LA that doesn't have them yet? <laughs> right. Mine. <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah. I'll stage the next house with your. Maybe I'll sell it for more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do I get a cut? <laughs> Are you saying we're partners? <laughs> All right. So, anyway, so your branding. I love it. I just Thank love you. it. I mean, I'm into branding, and I think it says a lot for you. Um, I think it really, you know, brings out the best. Uh, it's very elegant. It's uh, it's just it's it says uh, if you want to have a dream and you want to live right and everything, go to Dream Living LA. LA. You totally got it. Yeah. Honestly, I love that you recognize that, oh, and absolutely. I'm a big fan of my brand too. If yeah. I wasn't the president, I'd want to work for my brand because <laughs> it just emanates the best feeling. Yeah. Um, when I, you know, there's a lot of money that goes into creating a brand. Sure. And mm -hmm. when you transition into real estate. There are so many things happening that you need to figure out. It's very overwhelming. But one thing that I knew how to do very well was I'm a personal brand. I always have been. Yep. And I've created many brands for people. Yep. So I thought at the time when I came into the business, there weren't a lot of the big high-end brands that currently exist. So I wanted to create that feel of a membership-only club mm -hmm. kind of thing mm -hmm. where it was right. like Dream Living LA, you can have a dream at any price point. Right. Your lifestyle could be at any price point. I'm going to produce that lifestyle for you. Dream Living LA. And the goal was to be Dream Living NY, SF, you know, oh, Miami, eventually yeah. mm -hmm. to go global and expand globally. So I was starting to create the arch architecture of the brand in 2010, 11, and poured all this money into it, which is not typically the right way to get into real estate because you have to create your name first. Right. 
but I had already carried my name into the business. So people had known me. It's not like I came from not doing some very substantial things in my career. Mm -hmm. So I thought people know my quality of work, my integrity, my professional results. Mm -hmm. And if I can put this brand together that is going to make people feel a certain way at every touch point, from the service to the collateral to the cinematic tours that you see that I do to the filmic quality of what we shoot on the properties, the design, the development, it's, it's always going to get people to come back. So the brand, I've spent a lot of money and time oh, yeah. <laughs> in building it. And I'm really, really proud of it because I do get people calling me from all over saying, mm -hmm. oh my God, I want to work with you. And awesome. so should I, for all you VCs out there, <laughs> yes. wait, are you hiring? San Francisco? <laughs> yeah, well, the brand, Contact you know, me first. I'm a broker agent. <laughs> you're going to broker, broker the deal. Yes. Well, you know, the goal was I had a lot of clients in San Francisco when I transitioned because the tech, you know, boom was kind oh, of, yeah, definitely. It, it shattered Crazy. and then they mm -hmm. were all kind of cutting up pieces of the business and doing different things. And I thought, I want to create a, a model where no one understood how to use the digital landscape in real estate at the time. Mm -hmm. I came from NBC where I had a huge group of tech guys that mm -hmm. I worked with mm -hmm. that I had purview into understanding the intelligence behind the technology. Right. And I thought, Love oh it. my God, I'm going to take that. And when I get into real estate with my brand, most people were doing a ton of print, mm -hmm. which we still do. Right. Right. But no one was infiltrating the digital landscape. Right. So I was doing the Google target marketing and chasing and the integrated marketing everywhere. So you would see me everywhere all the time. Right. And so it was not um, a bad thing. It's not a, a bad thing. Good because you're going to really be pushing the show out on the, <laughs> <laughs> social care. media. <laughs> yeah, yeah, social media. Get your entire team behind it. <laughs> My two million people. Um, yeah. No, I wanted to be omnipresent. You know, mm -hmm. and it's like I also wanted to create the feeling of. Uh, Steve Jobs, I'm a big fan of Steve Jobs, and I worked with him years ago virtually. I never mm -hmm. met him, but I did a huge Apple campaign for him years ago, and I learned so much from his marketing presence and how he did things, and he was so synonymous with the brand. And so I wanted to create the brand that was synonymous with me, and people would see me as the face and the professionalism, the integrity, and the white glove service. Mm -hmm. But no matter who you were working with at my company, you would always get that same level of mm -hmm. you know, integrity mm -hmm. and professionalism. So to me, it was, yeah, it was a lot of work, but I'm very glad because well, here we are eight years later. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm very proud of the brand and people are chasing me down to do different things, co-sponsorships, strategic alliances, shows. Right. Um, so it's been great. So let me ask you this. So then when we talk about your digital ma marketing background, the thing I see all the time and I get out all the time and we make fun of it is like <laughs> I see Zillow, I call it Willow. <laughs> right? or, or Redfin and I call it Red Shark, you know, or Sharkfin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I mean, what's the, I just don't see a personal touch. Is there even, if you're dealing, I mean, I guess it's all done by metrics and algorithms and everything else, but I mean, they're not really touching you. They're not involved. No, Do they send an agent or anything No, they're like that? actually, it's absolutely, totally different. It's right. like apples to oranges. It's not even a comparison, but it, I was saying this earlier, I have a love-hate relationship with a lot of the platforms because... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm they are positioning themselves in a way to the consumer to make the consumer believe or deceive them in thinking that they are a brokerage or a provider of those services that we do personally. Right. So that is not the case. Mm -hmm. Redfin does have a service where you go on there, they're one of the biggest platforms where you shop. So now everybody's online, right? Yeah. Right. Everybody's on their phone online when they're looking for something. They're going to Google it. And so Redfin and Zillow yeah, yeah. have spent tons all, of money. I, I look all the time because every time I go someplace, my wife will say to me, I know you want to live there. <laughs> <laughs> it's just because, you know, I mean, there's a website that I'm in love with too. It's, uh, it's old homes under 50,000. Have you seen that one? No, I've not. Oh my God, I'm too busy using my app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, homes. not to get away from you, but I mean, it was it's pretty cool because I mean, they're in all these different, like they're in the Ohio's, Kentucky's, Illinois's, and small towns, but they're amazing. I mean, and, and so I guess I get hit up all the time by the the minute you click on Red uh, Redfin or yeah. you click on Zillow, you are going to get. Doesn't matter where you're hitting them up. Like if you so want to direct look. marketing, they start following yeah, right. you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's what. That's what their muscle is there. Mm -hmm. They have had several VCs over so many years give them so many, you know, funding, seed funding, uh, 
levels that they've taken that and created one of the most powerful platforms. Mm -hmm. Right. Redfin does provide an agent. Mm -hmm. I do understand that they do that. There are so many people that do what we do. Right. But when you have the best, you'll know it immediately. Absolutely. And so what these platforms do on the good side is they provide information, mm -hmm. like yeah. a marketplace, yeah. like yeah. Amazon. So right. I love that because it makes our job a little bit easier, 50% of the actual... Um, I think the deconstructing and also kind of sifting through what people want gets done online. Right. But when you're ready to actually make a move to buy or sell, you shouldn't make that move without an expert. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I... Period. You just... My, because it's, an, it's a very... I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. It's, you can't do business with a computer and algorithmic, yeah. you know, no, no. things. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an intrinsic quality and it's a human thing. I think the misconception also is that an agent's job is to find you a property. So going back to the technology question, mm -hmm. the technology has armed the clients with the ability to find the property. Right. So we have access to properties that are off market, mm -hmm. which you want an agent to also look while you're looking. So right. the power of two is mm -hmm. going to obviously have a better yeah. result. But you deduce as a client, you deduce online mm -hmm. and then I believe our job is to close the deal because finding the property, you might find it, I might find it, your friend right. might call you and say, hey, dude, I saw this house, yep. I love it, yep. you send it to me. Closing the deal is right. where our skill set comes into play. Mm -hmm. There are a hundred spinning plates. We never show the client. It's like a production. Yep. That's why it's so similar to me, yeah, what yeah, I do yeah. now yeah. from what I yeah. did before, oh, yeah. that we never see, at least me, I never let my client see me sweat. But <laughs> there are a hundred plates spinning and everything has to be on track. Yep. To close smoothly. Oh yeah. And if it does, you know, we never show you what we went through, but that's that's where skill plays in. Right. And a lot of agents don't know how to get their offer in front of the other agent's right. offer unless they're on the top. It's, you it's know. the back and forth. It's the getting all the ducks lined up. You have to provide all these financials, and then. But not only that, like in our market here, mm -hmm. it's so robust that if you put an offer, there's going to be ten other offers. So if I'm representing you, trust yep. me, you're going to get a response. Mm -hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the same with the other agent because it's a level thing mm -hmm. where you are in the game, where you are as an expert, your reputation, how your colleagues see you. Yeah, it's sort of like closing a job, right? Yeah. I mean, in a commercial exactly. or anything, yeah. in sports, which you're in. Exactly. Sports is I mean, it's incredibly. Like, you your know reputation. what? I want this job. What is it going to take? I yeah. need it, and yeah. that's my client wants it, and yeah. my director or whatever it is. No, it's, I mean, that's where. Right, and it's all, you know, in our business, it's also relationship based. Yeah. So yeah. I would say 80% of my business comes from people who know me and know my level of work and perfectionism and professionalism, and I'm like at 200%. Firing on all cylinders yeah. all the time for my clients. So my friends who know that, you know, recommend me. And mm -hmm. I prefer that because the barrier of entry is not as difficult yeah. when yeah. you're working with someone new, you know, when you already have the recommendation. And then if you Google me, you can see <laughs> my background. You know, I've been written up in so many publications because of my work and because of the clients who have been happy. And I'm very, very fortunate. I mean, I, I'm grateful. Well, you've worked hard. For <laughs> I've worked very hard. It's true. It wasn't that yeah, easy. Yeah, when I yeah. got into it, they say, you know, they look at what I'm doing and I think it's from the image that I put out there. Mm -hmm. Yes, we put this incredible, successful journey out for the world to see. But behind the scenes, I am working so hard and constantly never stop. It's overnight success bands. They played thousands of shows. They get discovered, they give them the funding to put them on big venues, and everyone starts listening to them on the radio, and they're like, oh, wow, this band just... Oh, it was an overnight yeah, success. It was overnight like, no. success, and they missed the 10 years of them touring yeah. In, yeah. A, in a van, yeah. you know, yeah. sleeping in the van, sleeping in motels, yeah. playing like anything. shows Blood, anywhere. sweat, and tears. Yeah, it exactly. It takes five years to launch a brand, no matter what, three at the very least. Five, you've been doing it eight, and now you're... Yeah, you know, I mean, it, the first two years were really rough. Yeah, no doubt. I, I definitely, but I didn't have a choice. I had a huge why. And I had no way to not become successful because mm -hmm. I know myself, but it was a rude awakening. I definitely thought it was going to be easier than it actually was, and um, but I stuck it through yeah. and through. And so now that you are where you are yes. and we are where we are, tell us about this wonderful <laughs> place Go transformed us to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is 3619 Avenida del Sol in Studio City. It's a stunning property that uh, was just fully redeveloped by one of my clients. And mm -hmm. thank you so much. I love my clients so much. He's <laughs> great um, from Vancouver, visionary, great guy. And this is my second project with him, although this one he asked me to design. 
Wow. So this is my second house that I've been involved in collaborating design wow. on. Um, the first one with him. But this one I'm really proud of because, you know, you have a lot of limitations with budget and what you can do and thinking about the resale factor on mm -hmm. a home. So we brought it down to the studs all the way. And everything you see here today we're sitting in is completely new. Wow. wow. For it's about 4,300 square feet. Right. With views to die for. Unbelievable. Yes. Gorgeous yeah. views. Um, we're in the hills of Studio City. Matt LeBlanc used to live above us, sold his house not too long ago. Uh, so it's well, a celebrity. I can't go stock him now. <laughs> not yeah, anymore. Right? Yeah. And Anna Nicole Smith, her house was across the street. Wow. Uh, Charlton Heston owned a home down the street here. Oh, wow. So it's it's big with producers and writers and actors because okay. it's very close to the studios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? We're in the heart of Studio City. Yeah. It's like two wasn't minutes. Yeah, it wasn't that hard to get here. I mean, right? once you get up, I mean, the roads are a little narrow. but It's a little it, veiny. Yeah, but that's any, but, any coming up in the hills anywhere. But I've been in houses where, oh, my God, I forgot <laughs> something. And you got to go back. It's like, forget about it. No, the good about thing it. is it's two minutes to the market. Yeah, yeah. It's 15 minutes to Beverly Hills. The yeah. location's fantastic. Did you actually go over the hill from here? Absolutely. Or no? So when you go down the street, you make a left, you're right an, into Beverly Hills oh, on, wow. over That's cold fantastic. water. Oh, of course, okay. of course. So it's wow. ideal for anybody Great. that wants privacy. Typically, we have buyers here in the in the entertainment business mm -hmm. in an, um, because they like to have their privacy but still get to work pretty quickly. So everything you see here has been done, just completed about 45 days ago. So wow. Wow. pretty and new. this was all your design, you're saying? Well, when I, I had the house originally as a listing, uh -huh. my girlfriend owned it. She's a big producer. Okay. And I sold it for her to my client from Vancouver, who's a developer. Mm -hmm. And when I was originally selling the house for my girlfriend, it didn't look anything like this. And I would sit down, and it was very closed, and you wouldn't even see any of the views. And I would walk to the kitchen. It was like a little window, and I saw these incredible views. Oh and I thought to right. myself... This is screaming for a deck. Mm -hmm. this, this is 360. Yeah, yeah. You this really is screaming can stand over for... there by the front door. Yep. And you can see out any window. Yeah, no beautiful. And yep. I wanted to completely open up the house, make it indoor outdoor, which is the type of lifestyle people want in California. Right. Mm -hmm. Open up the entire house, like push through the ceilings, the heights here are incredible mm -hmm. in the rooms. And so we did. We just literally brought everything down to the studs. We broke through all the drywall. We rebuilt it, created a brand new deck out there that mm -hmm. is stunning for Beautiful. partying. Yes. Um, all of the French doors and the pocket doors in the kitchen. Everything's brand spanking new. We have a deck outside. You can build a pool here. We've already got engineering for that um, sorted wow. out, like discussed and consulted. Right, right, right. In so case she wants to do yeah, it. Yeah, it's right. easy and it would be beautiful. Um, it's a great house. I'm really proud of this one and that he let me design it. Right. Because it takes a lot of faith mm -hmm. from a client and partnership yep. and trust for um, a client to allow me to do something like that. Yeah. So you is know. this house on the market then? It's on the market for 29995 just a hair under $3 million. Mm -hmm. uh, we got three offers on the property. Wow. And we knew that. We priced it a little under market value uh, because we wanted to initiate multiple mm -hmm. offers, which we did. Mm -hmm. So we are in escrow. Awesome. Very happy. That guy saw it on Willow for 300K. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. By the way, speaking yes. of the 300K. So that's the other thing about Zillow, especially. Great platform, but don't yeah. trust their numbers because yeah. their statistics are not based on the intel that we have through the MLS or mm -hmm. the agent intel that we have on market data. Mm -hmm. They go based on algorithms. So if you'll see when you meet with an agent and look mm -hmm. at the Zillow, Zestimate, yeah. and mm -hmm. then the real number we're going to give you. Sometimes it fluctuates from like fifteen to forty percent de right. decline or incline. It's wow. really, really all yeah. over the map. But yeah. see, because consumers need the information at their fingertips, they're yep. going to go there. Yeah. And so Zillow's uh, angle is to suck in the consumer from right. obviously Quick when you're bait. right when you're spending time, and then agents buy advertising space. Right against the platform right. and then it pushes out you'll see when i have a listing if you go to this listing on zillow mm -hmm. it'll say exclusive listing agent because uh. i block the ability for others to advertise against my property so zillow's selling my property mm -hmm. to other agents to <laughs> advertise on they're making money on agents right. that's how they make their money right the consumers aren't paying a membership fee mm -hmm. right Right. So right. they're making money off the brokers and the agents, yeah. but at the same time, they're creating the deception of yeah. them sort of being a brokerage. Kind of like which Google, where you got to you know spend certain stuff to push it, your listings up to higher results. Otherwise, when's the last time anyone's ever been to page two on Google? 
Yeah, that's true. <laughs> right, you don't right? you don't actually have to go to pay. You know, I tried. I've I've worked on really again infiltrating on a very organic level mm -hmm. by using Google. Right. I know how to use it. Right. If you use all their platforms, they naturally push you out. Right. Right. So you have to know how to use the system. My job is to clarify and you know navigate for the client, so they're getting the honest information, the best possible representation, and uh, accurate information. Awesome. That's great. Well, why don't we take a break? Yep. Okay, and uh, we'll be right back with Tatiana and uh, Dream Living LA. And I think uh, we'd love to get into the uh, current marketplace next. Yep. And, uh, and some we'll true take crime. a break, and uh, we'll be right back.